So I wanted to change it up on my channel a little bit and try to produce the lowest effort video, which is probably gonna get the highest amount of views out of all my videos I publish on this channel. So let's just dive into it. This is a Reddit post. It is titled, It Finally Happened, It Rejected for Not Using AI First. Honestly, you could have been rejected because you don't know how to properly type a title into a Reddit post. Let's read through this. Let's get his opinion on his interview, what he said about AI, and also give my opinions on when you should and should not be using AI in your day job. Because I have been using it extensively for a lot of things, and I have found it very useful. I've been vibe coding a lot on various side projects and at work for writing like infrastructure as code, Terraform, etc. Let's just dive into it and try to see what he's saying. So I just got rejected from a software dev job and the email was interesting. Yesterday I had an interview with the CEO of a startup that sounded cool. Their tech stack was mainly Ruby and migrating to Elixir. And I had three interviews, one with HR, another was a coder byte test, and then a technical discussion with the team. The final round was with the CEO. So I mean, it sounds like you had like almost four interviews, right? You're interviewing four different people who asked about my approach to coding and how I incorporated AI into my development process. I said something like, you can't vibe code your way to production. LLMs are too verbose and their code is either insecure or tries to write a basic functions from scratch instead of using built-in tools. Even when using Agenic AI in my small hobby project, it struggled to add a simple feature. I use AI as smarter autocomplete, not a crutch. All right, let's break down his statement and I'll give you my opinion on it. So he's saying you can't vibe code your way to production. I would say, honestly, this is... There's some truth to this, right? I've been coding for like 11, 12 years now, and I've been vibe coding extensively on a lot of my side projects. So I have like this writing platform site where you can go through here, you can add books. We have an admin ability where if you're an admin, you can go and start editing chapters. You have this rich text editor added from TipTap. This modal was all vibe coded. The ability to switch chapters was vibe coded. The progress indicator, uh, you know, the debounce for auto saving this stuff. Uh, was vibe coded all these comments these recursively nested comments literally one prompt i one prompt added this and it added in the ability to delete them the ability to heart them so when he says you can't vibe code your way to production i have seen tremendous results on literally just prompting very well and getting stuff to like getting cursor and claw to generate a really good code second project i want to share is this course platform i worked on basically all this has been vibe coded this entire landing page is vibe coded the pricing page was all vibe coded all the marketing and the design was vibe coded the course content page the ability for me to log in as an admin and upload videos to my my vps server that's hosting this and store those on local disk all vibe coded. Granted, there are times where I have to go in and I have to manually do things myself. I have to fix things. And also I have a lot of experience so I can read through the code and I can fix things right then and there when it tries to produce code that I know is pretty bad. So I would say that you can vibe code your way to production if you have a little bit of experience to help guide the LLM along the way. LLMs like Claude and ChatGPT still hallucinate a lot. So sometimes it's going to throw in code or delete code that you know it shouldn't. But it's as simple as just rejecting the code changes and reprompting it and saying, hey, don't delete this or hey, do this instead. And also there's usually something called cursor rules or rules files that you can start adding in things that you see patterns of the LLM messing up and you can improve its consistency along the way. So I would kind of push back on this. I would say that I have coded some stuff in production, even at work. I do a lot of vibe coding for just generating the initial Terraform code that deploys out a Django Wagtail application, right? One of the things that we're doing is we're rewriting an entire application from a static site into a CMS-enabled Django application that uses Wagtail. So migrating from an existing system to a new one, I have seen quite a lot of success, basically asking Claude to take this file and translate it to a new library or new language, and then also taking a screenshot of the page and having it generate the HTML and CSS and the styling for it. So I'd probably dive in a little bit more and ask him more questions about this because he does mention, I tried it in a small hobby project. The fact that he didn't say projects is kind of concerning. The fact that he says, I tried to add a simple feature is kind of concerning. You need to try AI for multiple features, multiple bugs, for multiple projects and see how it works. If you try it once and it sucks, then you haven't tried it enough because there is a technique to becoming good at prompting. And if you just write it off, you're not truly understanding the power of AI and these uh, vibe coding approaches. Now, one thing I do think is very accurate with is their code is either insecure or tries to write basic functions from scratch instead of built-in tools. There is truth to this. A lot of the times when I vibe code, it will forget to add in authentication checks or various authorization um, logic checks in my code. And I have to manually go through and read the code. So if you are vibe coding, I would recommend that you need to get good at reading through code 
and understanding where in your code base, you typically have layers, right? You have boundaries, you have an API. In the very front of the API, you have your inputs from the users and you have your outputs that leave the API. This is a boundary that you need to be very cautious about double checking any code that was created by Claude or Cursor or whatever. And also you can just prompt Cursor and say, hey, double check the code you just generated for security vulnerabilities and please fix. Also the code inside of your business logic, you should probably check that. Anytime that you're writing React application code, if you have like a dangerously set inner HTML, that is a red flag that you should probably double and triple check that you're sanitizing the HTML that's being sent over to the backend. Again, these are things that take experience to learn and you will not ask these questions unless you have the experience. So I will say yes, the code it generates can be insecure, but if you have any type of knowledge about security, you should probably reprompt the code that's generated and read through it and make sure it's good. Same thing with generating basic functions from scratch. You have to have some knowledge of the domain you're using. For example, I tried vibe coding a debounce function. Um, when I save something here, if I were to write something and save it, it actually debounces after two seconds and then it'll save and persist those changes to my API. And it tried to add in a custom debounce function. And I already know that there's like a very common one called Lodash which I instead say, you know, just bring in Lodash instead and use that function. So overall, I'd say like, I don't think he gave enough information as to why he thinks it's bad and he hasn't used it enough to truly show that it's bad because I've used it quite a lot on my channel and I would say that I would not switch back to just plain coding anymore. It's just not productive. The fact that I have to write all this code by hand and I can just prompt AI and have it spit out all the code in five, 10 seconds and I can review it in maybe one or two minutes. In my opinion, which might be a bad take, the productivity gains of using AI to generate the code and just reading through it is much, much higher than just like writing code by hand, especially for web development, which is a well-solved domain. So keep that in mind. Now in this whole section, he didn't say like what position he is going for. Was it a junior position? The fact that he's getting a coder bite test makes me think that either this company is just bad at interviewing or he's trying to get a junior position because typically you could just ask a developer a lot of questions and really gauge their knowledge from just how they kind of respond. But let's move on. I kind of talked about this for a while. So fast forward five minutes after the interview and I got an email with this line. Thank you for your time. We decided to move forward with someone who prioritizes AI first workflows to maximize productivity in sh and shape the future of tech. At least he didn't get ghosted. He actually got a response within five minutes. So that's pretty good. He should be kind of thankful for that because a lot of the times these people will just ghost you and they will never tell you why they rejected you. Just no callback, no anything. You're just left in limbo and you start interviewing other places because they didn't have the courtesy to tell you that, hey, uh, there's someone else better that we found. Here's the thing. I respect innovation. I'm not saying LLMs are completely useless, but I am not going to let AI write entire code for a feature for me. They're great for brainstorming and breaking down tasks, but when you let them dictate the logic, it's a mess. And yes, their code is often wildly over-engineered and secure. So from reading this, I will say he's very dismissive about it. I've seen a lot of people in this industry who are very dismissive about AI. They write it off of like the slop generator. And honestly, I just don't think they've used that enough to truly see the benefit. They're just not good at prompting to really get good results. I even talked to a friend who has no idea how to code and he literally vibe coded an entire questionnaire application that stores the results in a Google sheet. So vibe coding is enabling people who have no experience to generate and build applications and get them deployed out somewhere. And so to completely write off this new technology as like, it's a waste, it's just wrong. To be honest, I'm pissed off. I was laid off a few months ago and this is the first company to actually respond to my application and I made it all the way to the final round and was optimistic. I keep reviewing the meeting in my mind. Where did I F up? Did I come up as an elitist, but I didn't make fun of vibe coders and I wasn't completely dismissive of the LLMs either. This whole paragraph kind of shows me your character, right? You seem like you're very upset. You're angry that they didn't hire you. And instead of actually reflecting and finding ways, okay, maybe you should go and like look into AI because maybe the company you're getting hired for has seen a lot of productivity gains. I know you're kind of angry you got fired and you're not getting a job. Yeah, I think this one's really good. I would probably say hit on this a little bit. So I respect innovation. I'm not saying LLMs are completely useless. Something I would say that you need to iterate on is like two to three years ago, LLMs were generating some pretty bad code with tons of issues. Now you can actually like one prompt entire features in your code base and it works perfectly. Like you can read through the code there's no security vulnerabilities. There's no issues with it. Now, obviously, if you're doing a different domain instead of web development, you have to be more cautious about what's going on. Like maybe you're building a game engine or like you're doing systems engineering. Yeah, maybe vibe coding is not gonna work very well. But keep in mind, we are on a web dev subreddit. So I've, I've been doing web dev for a long time. I have been using Cursor exclusively for a long time. 
I have seen some good results using Cursor with Claude 4. Comes back and edits and says, I want to say I appreciate everybody comments here and multiple users have pointed out I was coming out too negative. I agree. I feel like you're kind of negative instead of looking at the benefits of LLMs and the benefits of vibe coding. There's, there's some good things about it. So don't completely write it off. I felt that I framed it in a way that I use Copilot to increase my productivity, but not to do my job for me without supervision. But I guess I failed to convey that. Multiple people mentioned using the sandwich method, and I would probably do that in the future. So the sandwich method, basically, you say something nice about vibe coding. You say, you know what, I've tried vibe coding on a side project, and it managed to allow me to create a bunch of features within a day that might have taken me, you know, five or 10 days before. So that's like the bun. You say something nice about whatever it is, a tool, a person, a friend, technology, and then you get to the actual meat. What is your true opinion? And then you start saying, okay, I think it has security vulnerabilities. I think it has issues with hallucinations. I think it has X, Y, and Z issues. And then finally you finish at the very end. You say, but I think, you know, I have seen LLMs increase over the years and they're becoming better and better. So maybe my opinions may change and I may start leveraging vibe coding a little bit more in a year or two when I stop seeing as many hallucinations. I think there's potential. I'm just kind of waiting and hesitant to fully dive into letting AI write all my code. So that's kind of the sandwich method. You do something nice, you actually give your opinion and then you just finish with something nice as well. So yes, this could have just been a communication issue. You could have said a couple of words in the way that you were kind of explaining your distaste for vibe coding and LLMs and that distaste came across as negative or elitist. And that alone, the, the soft skills that you need to learn in an interview, if you don't have them, someone could write you off right then, then and there, right? If one person during this whole team discussion says, uh, you know, I just don't like his energy. And then another person's like, you know what? I was kind of on the fence, but I agree. He felt kind of negative. Right then and there, you're, you're done, right? You're not going to hire you because you had multiple people say they didn't like your negativity. And then that's kind of it. Now, when you read a Reddit post, always go to the comments and get more information. I would say that Reddit comments are typically like people who just kind of pat you on the back and say, it's okay, bro, you, you dodged the bullet there. No, there's a lot of stuff that you can take away from this interview. This comment is the most useless comment you can actually leave someone on Reddit, right? There are legit feedback you can give this guy instead of saying, cool, you dodged the bullet there. No, maybe this guy was just very bad in an interview. This guy maybe just really bashed AI and the CEO of that company could be vibe coding for a whole year now. And they have probably have seen a lot of productivity gains from their vibe coding and to hire someone who says, oh, you know, vibe coding's dumb. It, it doesn't really produce results. That could be why you were turned down. So just be cautious about the comments. Like they're always gonna try to make you feel like it wasn't your fault, but technically it probably was. And then you have this person, this is the correct answer. Honestly, this is all cope. This is really all cope. Um, there's a lot of developers out there who think they can write code by hand much faster than AI. And they think that they're smarter than AI. But in reality, when you can prompt AI and it can churn out an entire feature in you know 20 seconds, that it would have taken a developer like a day or two to get done, like that's just cope. I have seen a lot of people code. I've been coding for a while and there are true productivity gains of really embracing AI from what I've seen. Other people in the comments are saying, if the CEO asks about AI, you should probably just give them some good responses and butter them up and let them hear what they wanna hear. There's some truth to that. I mean, you wanna act like a team player, but at the same time, like you don't wanna go against your true intuitions. If you really think AI sucks and this company you're about to go to really likes AI, it's probably not gonna be a good fit for you anyway, because you're gonna get hired Everyone's going to be using cursor and uh, vibe coding and whatever LLMs to help make them very productive. And they're going to be shipping more features than you will. And eventually you're just going to get fired anyway, because they thought that you were big into AI and you weren't. And that's really going to destroy your ego after a month when they let you go again, when they realize that you just don't want to vibe code or whatever. That company will fail anyway. Again, this is just cope. I've seen enough productivity gains where I'm actually on the other fence now. Like I probably wouldn't want to hire someone who says they use no AI. If you come to me and you're like, I don't use any AI because I don't trust it. I would not hire you. Like I just wouldn't hire you. I've worked with multiple senior engineers on my team. A lot of us use Claude or ChatGPT to ask questions, to iterate fast. I start with agent mode to just do the initial draft of the code. I read through it. I refine it. I have a bunch of knowledge already in my head of how stuff should be written. And I go and I refine the prompting and I'm still faster letting AI write the code and I come through and fix it than I am just like typing by hand. One thing that you have to keep in mind is that people do not code fast. Like the average words per minute from a coder is like what, 40, 50 words per minute. So it's gonna take them a very long time to code out a lot of features. Just to show you that I am very productive at using my computer in typing, I would still leverage AI to write the code because I found it 
to be so much faster than me trying to type code by hand anyway. So let's just do like a 15 second monkey type just to kind of show off to you all. Okay, 146. I did make a couple of mess ups, but I've gotten a little bit higher than this before. But the point is, is that there's just a lot of cope in this industry still about this AI revolution that's going on. Whether you want to call it an AI revolution or not, like the quality of the code that's being generated, the quality of the AI images that's being created, the quality of the AI videos that has gone from being terrible two to three years ago to actually something very, very good. I think it's kind of naive to think that in two to three years, we are not gonna have even better results. I mean, we have people building entire AI data sensors now. Like XAI is basically building huge data centers within like a couple of months. And so we are actually going all in as far as like the United States is for building out our AI infrastructure. And I think it would just be kind of silly not to think that this is actually like a breakthrough in the industry. But who knows, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, we'll find out in a year or two. That's my take, hope you guys enjoyed my opinions and leave a comment if you have a different opinion on this article and what you think about this person who tried to interview but he just didn't seem like he liked AI and should he have gotten hired or should he gotten rejected this fast from not really embracing vibe coding and AI. All right, have a good day and happy coding.